In this video, I'm gonna show you my entire editing workflow in Capture One Pro. So I released a video recently about why I switched from Lightroom to Capture One. And in the video, I did a side-by-side -side edit, but I tried to keep it a little bit neutral and I didn't really do all of the things that I would typically do in Capture One when I'm editing. So I decided I wanted to do a video that showed my entire editing workflow from start to finish to give you a sense of what I do when I'm editing portraits. So without further ado, let's go to the computer and start editing a photo in Capture One Pro. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through two different edits in Capture One Pro, just to give you a sense of my editing workflow from start to finish. Now the first thing I do whenever I pull a photo into Capture One that I wanna edit is I actually apply a preset. Now I know presets are sort of controversial in the photo community, some people love them, some people hate them. I like to use them as sort of a baseline. It helps speed up my editing workflow and make things a little bit easier. So I have installed on my program Capture One Styles. Now this was initially, I believe, a third-party company that produced these film emulation presets for Capture One users, but I think it's since been bought by Capture One because now I see Capture One Styles on their website and I can't find the original website where I purchased them, so I think that might be the case. Now these are different film emulation presets, um, trying to mimic the look of different film stocks. Uh, there's a lot of different ones in here. The only one I use is these Fuji Pro 160s. So I usually use this one, it's called Fuji Pro 160 version one. Now what this does is it actually applies a curves edit and gives different points on the curves editor here. So it gives this sort of S curve and gives you a very punchy kind of contrasty look that I really like in my photographs. So once I've applied the preset, next I, what I like to usually do is go to the exposure panel here and then make some adjustments to exposure. So I'm gonna brighten this image up just slightly and then probably pull the highlights down to sort of recover some detail up here. We'll brighten up the mid-tone piece right here or the midpoint on the curve. And then I'll pull this down slightly. Next thing I like to do is then make some adjustments to my white balance. Now, I've already got the white balance pretty good. It's close to where I want it, but I usually like to go a little bit cooler with the image than this. So I'm just gonna drag this down to around 5,400. And then after I've nailed my exposure and my curves and the high dynamic range part, the last thing I like to do is apply a vignette. So. Um, usually this is set to zero. I like to bring it down to around 0.5, something that's subtle but draws the eyes, draws the viewer's eye into the subject of the photo. So this is a pretty good edit. I'm gonna roll with that. So now I just wanna show you one more edit of a photo that I took of my friend Allison at nighttime. So again, what I wanna do first is apply the preset, I'm gonna use Fuji 160 version one. And whenever the photo is kind of darker at night or a little bit underexposed, this preset really uh, makes the photo quite dark. So the next thing I wanna do actually is bring up the exposure, bring it to about there. Also gonna raise up the brightness a bit Pull this down to recover some of the shadow detail. Gonna brighten up that part a bit. Starting to get it closer to where I like it. And then we're gonna pull down, try to add a little bit more contrast there. So now the image is way too warm. So the next thing I wanna do is go back to white balance here. And we're going to actually pull this white balance down a bit. So I'm just gonna drag the slider. And again, this is really trial and error. And what I'm paying attention to here whenever I'm adjusting the white balance is how is it affecting her skin tones? Um, I wanna make this image basically as cool toned as possible without giving 
a sort of lifeless look to her face. So it's gonna bring that down. That might be a little bit too much, but I wanna bring it down further just to sort of test it. So that's probably too far. So I wanna warm up her skin tone just a little bit here. Bring it up to 3100. And then there's still sort of a greenish tint to her face. So I'm just gonna bring this up to around 8.1. Again, a lot of trial and error. I still think it's a little too warm for my taste. So I'm actually gonna bring this to 29.50. We're gonna try that. I think that's about what I want. So I'm gonna come back here actually. We're gonna brighten this up a bit just to create a little bit smoother brightness on Allison's face there. So again, I've already applied a slight vignette to this edit and this sort of gives me something that I find pretty acceptable. So I'm gonna roll with those edits. I wanna show you next a few just before and after edits in a slideshow just to give you a sense of what the differences in looks are of some of my favorite photos. So I hope you all found this video helpful and gives you some idea of how I edit my pictures and gives you some ideas about how you can improve your editing as well. If you're interested in seeing more Capture One editing tutorials, leave a comment down below. We'll see you soon, folks. This has been another episode of Damn Bowl Photography. Peace. Hey, yo, if you like this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in touch with all the awesome portrait photography tutorials I'm putting out. Also, you can click on the links on the screen to watch another video. Boom, dude.